I really don't want to make an intro and you already read the title. So here's the video. First step is to check the weather. Right now it's about 11 a.m. Around 10 p.m. when we would probably start, there's 4% cloud cover, which is perfect. And that lasts basically to 2 a.m. The next thing I like to look at is the wind. It really doesn't impact my decision too much. And really anything below 10 is fine. Then next thing I check is the temperature, low 70s, which is fine. And then the dew point is going to be pretty close to the temperature, so we might have to get the dew heaters. I use the app Dark Sky. It shows you the most information, I think. It's always good to double check with multiple weather apps. So the next thing I would do is come over to my um, spreadsheet here and check what the moon's gonna be doing. The moon's going to set tonight at 10.30, but it's only gonna be illuminated 16%, so that's really not an issue at all. After that, I'm going to look for a target. So I have this spreadsheet that kind of organizes everything for me. Since the moon's not a problem, we're gonna be looking for a broadband target. I've kind of already narrowed it down to the Iris Nebula. I like the blues and then I, and the dark nebula dust in the background. So then what I do is I go to a distillarium and search up the Iris Nebula, and then switch the time up to tonight, about when we start imaging at 10. Now I wanna do it in the Celestron. It's gonna be pretty high in the sky, 53 degrees of altitude. When we start is good, and then looks like it'll cross the meridian around 1 a.m. The meridian is the line that runs from north to south, and your mount has to do a meridian flip when it crosses that line so that the telescope does not go crashing into the mount. It is 7.43 right now. The weather um, has held, and it's looks like clear skies, so I think we're good to go. So what we're gonna do now is take all the gear out um, onto the patio here. I've already got the chairs and the table. We just need to get the mount, the telescope, the battery, and all the cables out here. And then after that, we'll move it out to the middle of the field out there. Everything out here. So we put the telescope on top of the mount, computer, just the bottom of the mount. Right now, we're trying to point the mount directly north. And then after this, we'll connect all the cords, the power box, and this battery. So right now it's about north. I'm gonna balance the mount. So that means that when you tilt it like this, that's not balanced. So this counterweight needs to come out a bit further. About like that. But just a couple notes on our DIY power supply. So we've got it set up to run off of a, it's kind of a pseudo 12 volt battery. I think it might be 14.7 or something. Lithium iron phosphate battery. I think it was rated at about 100 amp hours. They're uh, a lot lighter than a similarly sized lead acid battery. And it's a lot safer than a lithium polymer battery. We can run for two nights without recharging, and I bet we could probably run three and maybe even a little more. That connects into this power distribution box that we've got here. We've made this ourselves. Basically inside of here is a kind of an automotive fuse rail. So there's about eight or 10 fuse circuits in here. They supply a couple cigarette style outputs, a couple USB ports. These are both 12 volts. This is a 7.2 volt jack, and this box also houses the controller for the focuser. The computer that we've got here is a Mac Mini, and it runs natively actually off of 12 volts. And the output on the battery here is 13, 14 volts, something like that. So I didn't want to feed that directly into the computer. So there's a 12 volt regulator in here. So we get a good steady 12 volts into the computer, and that's it. So next step is to plug in all of these cords either between the camera, filter wheel, the mount, the computer, and the power. So that's what we will do next. So 
So now we can turn it on. And turn the mount on. And we can turn the computer on. And there it goes. So now that the computer's open, we can open up all our acquisition software. So that's Nina. And then we open the pull master to help with polar alignment. We can connect to the camera up top. And then I gotta take the cap off. And the screen is white because it's still too bright out. It's gotta be a little darker before we start seeing stars here. So we can close this. And over Nina, um, we're gonna connect everything. So connect the camera, connect the filter wheel, connect the focuser, connect the telescope. That opens up EQ mod, which we use to control the telescope. Then also I wanna open up Stellarium. So right now we're still waiting for it to get dark enough to start polar aligning. I can start creating the imaging plan. So I can go into Stellarium and search up the Iris Nebula, and there it is. And then if I go back over to Nina, I can push this button here, and there it is. Now it's got the Iris Nebula pulled up. So then what I do here is I go to Add Target to Sequence, Simple Sequencer. And then I can set up the image sequence. And I like to use this chart to kind of see how much time we have. We have until 4 a.m. that means, which is uh, six hours of time. So we want this duration here to be about six hours. Usually I just like to go with um, five minute exposures. And then I can create three of them. So that's six hours, 15 minutes. Maybe I should go 24. Boom, six hours. So then we're gonna do each filter, red, green, and blue. Then I like to put it on the loop so that we get the same number of exposures on each filter. So we can now see stars in our polar scope. There's Polaris. And then we start the routine here to get ourselves polar aligned. Okay, so what we're doing now is polar alignment. Polar alignment is the process of aligning the axes of rotation of the mount with the north celestial pole, the point at which the entire night sky rotates around. With the mount aligned to the pole, it can now rotate along with the sky and track it, which is essential for taking longer exposures. We are using the QHY Pole Master, a camera specifically used for polar alignment. The Pole Master takes a few inputs and then tells you where to position Polaris in order to be correctly aligned. The program on the screen right now is the software for the Pole Master. Okay, so now it's told us that we need to move the star from right here right over into this uh, circle. So how I do that is on the front of the mount here, there's some bolts here to move it, move it up and down and side to side, the Alt and As bolts. I'll start with moving it to the side by unscrewing one and then screwing this one in to make the star go to the left. The next challenge is usually to focus the telescope. Right now it's pretty out of focus because there's no stars on the screen right now. We managed to bring it into focus enough so that we can see some out of focus stars and then bring them in small enough so that we can plate solve our way to a brighter star. So plate solving is a technique where the computer will analyze the stars in an image you take and then match it with the stars it has in a database to determine the exact coordinates that the telescope is currently pointed at. After the telescope knows where it is pointed, we can easily tell it where to go. So now we're slowing over to the bright star Vega. Now that we're looking at Vega, we put the Tribatinov mask over the telescope, which produces the diffraction spikes you're seeing now. This aids us in collimating the telescope. Collimation is the alignment of the secondary mirror within the telescope, and right now I'm adjusting the collimation knobs on the telescope in order to line up the center diffraction spikes. Okay, now that the telescope is focused and collimated, we slew it over to the target. It uses plate solving again to verify its position and center the telescope on the target. After that, I double check that the camera's current rotation is framing the target acceptably, and then the target is framed. Okay, next I have to cool down the camera to about negative 10 degrees Celsius before starting the image. Cooling the camera helps reduce noise in the image. 
the last thing we do before starting the image sequence is to turn on the guiding. I'm going to open up PHD2 here, the guiding program. Guiding is helpful for taking longer exposures because the mount's tracking often is not accurate enough to take long exposures with, without some minor star movement. Mounted on top of the Celestron is another small scope and camera which is used for guiding. The guiding program locks onto a star and then monitors its movements in order to send corrections to the mount. Now I let the rig run overnight and come back in the morning. Um, it's about 9 a.m. the following morning right now. I'm heading out to the setup to see how it went. Take the flat exposures and tear it down. I'm hoping the scope does not have too much dew on it, but it looks like it does. The automated meridian flip failed at about 1.30 a.m., so we missed out on half the exposures, we only got eight on each filter. Yeah, so right now I'm gonna take the flats. Right now it's taking flat exposures. I'll throw up an image of what flat field correction does. It basically subtracts the vignetting from the image to give you a flatter field. But we have just like a drawing kind of light pad here and then I just put a mouse pad over it just to block the sunlight coming in because that makes it um, overexposed. But the idea is to get a um, even illumination of light on the camera sensor. So it does these for each filter. It's going to do 20 on each filter. I typically do this every morning after we've been out here. Okay, so now the flats are finished up now and what I'm going to do is tear down the setup After all is said and done, the rig produced 8 exposures each on the red, green, and blue filters. Of those 8, only the first 3 were usable. Around the 4th image there was a noticeable effect on the image from dew buildup on the scope. I did my best to salvage the data, and here's what I managed to make. The Iris Nebula is 1300 light years away within our galaxy. It is a reflection nebula illuminated by an open star cluster within the nebula. 